Let's right. say we do have the first tie in electoral college history. What happens then? Well, you, you they, they, let me see, that, that's a good question. They kind of go at it. If they don't have 270, and then it, it goes into the house again. So they're gonna, be, they, they are considered faithless electors, right? So most state laws say which party gets to decide who picks. You know, we've had this case before in Florida, the Dred Scott, I mean, not Dred Scott, I'm sorry, the, the Rutherford B. Hayes Tilden election, they mm -hmm. negotiated their way out of, despite what the result was, they negotiated for the Republicans to retain control as long as the troops were removed from the South in the Civil War. So that's what happened in Hayes Tilden in the 1860s. And then the election, the Supreme Court decided it. And so there's always the potential for the Supreme Court to get involved. However, the Constitution says that if, if by the sixth it hasn't been decided and, the, and Congress, the, the electors go at it, and if they don't get a 70 70 split, Congress decides. And, and it'll be by, not by the number of representatives in Congress, it will be by state delegations. And so right now, I think the split is Republicans leading 26 to 22 in terms of delegations. Yep. Some states are, that are tied or, or- Right, right. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's 26, 24 as right. far as the delegations go. So that would mean if there was a- Yeah, yeah, but, but listen now, that's- okay. On the sixth, they decide. On the third, if there's a blue wave or not, it, that will determine. It's not lame duck. It's not who's currently in there. It's who's elected by January third. Oh, fascinating! So, so January third is twenty-two today, right? Right. And January third, that's when the House and Senate are sworn in. They're New sworn members. in. So we. We'll so if those members are sworn in, those are the people that vote. Those not are the, the people, people that. that are yes. 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 But I know both parties are keenly aware of that. And you're right, the public is probably not aware of that. But right now it's 26-22 leaning towards Republican. I think it was like 32-17 before the midterm elections. Now it's 20-22. Yeah. And, and, and so whatever happens by the third in terms of the lower seats, the lower chambers, and, and you can imagine Nancy Pelosi and all the Democrats are keenly aware of which states they need to flip that are either tied or independent controls to negotiate with or states that could be flipped, they're going after them because they are aware that even though, they, and again, Nancy Pelosi makes the rules for the house. And if it gets muddy inside the lines of whatever the constitution says, the Democrats control the house. And so it could get real tricky on who interprets what I mean, you never would have dreamed that that when it comes to uh, appointing a Supreme Court justice, everybody knew that the president appoints, right? Right. But knew that the Senate would just say, well, we're just not going to meet. Uh, right. What are you most worried about heading into November 3rd? Well, I, I, th I think what we're most worried about is I, I, I despite the theoretical parade of horribles, um, I think it's going to be as close as we think it is. I, I think there will be clear majority vote on the population. I think there'll be a clear electoral college. However, this particular president, not, not talking about parties, this particular president seems to have no problem flouting the rules. They just, he just doesn't care. So you, not, not since Nixon did you think a president would think, I could just ignore subpoenas, right? And they have a clear control of the Supreme Court. And so it gets kind of great. I, where there's a political question that the Constitution says Congress should decide and the House is it, I think it'll be clouded that w where we can get the Supreme Court involved. So right now we've got 80 million that have already right. early voted. Right. Could we see 160, 70, 80 million people cast a vote this year? I, I, from what well, I was listening last night, I think we're almost there in early voting in, term, in terms of the level of voting since the last election. Right now, I think it was like, I can't remember the figures, but we're close to the exact amount of people that voted in total for 2016. Have yeah, we're close. I think we're at right now, and the number changes. It just depends when you turn on the TV and look at the update. Right, 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 right. They're at, they're just over 80 million right, right now, which is, right. I mean, that is absurd when you think right. about that. Absurd we're still five days vote. out. Do right. you think? Um, and you're an election attorney, so that's that's a super specialized type of attorney. Uh, 
do you think that there is going to be an issue this year with, you know, in 2000, 20 years ago, it feels like ancient history, we had these, they called them butterfly ballots, hanging chads, they called them right, pregnant right. ballots, you know, but that's because, that's because Joe Voter was going in and physically right. punching, right. punching right. the thing. Right. Now this is, now we are, are, are licking and mailing. Right. Um, right, right. Is there an issue? Do you think there'll be a problem with counting ballots now? It, 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 uh, there is no perfect election. That is clear. And the hanging chad of 2020 will be matching signatures. The hanging chad will be the deliberate attempt by the president to frustrate the mail service. And in Florida, it was always the case. It had to be here by the day of election. In other states, that's not the case. Can I, can I, Reggie, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's, that's, you bring up a very fascinating point with the matching signatures. Okay. So that's the canvassing board that's doing that. Um, right. And the canvassing board will have a, a Democrat, a Republican, and usually a judge. Um, right. And they'll look at the signatures. Right. I don't right. know about you, Reggie. My signature looks different. Exactly. Almost, and Reggie, exactly. I, sign a lot, I sign a lot of autographs too. You right. Know? Right. So, no, right. No, no. right. Right. My signature, my signature never looks exactly. the same. So exactly. Exactly. My signature when I first um, started voting is different from my current signature that, so I had to, I literally physically went in to look at it. It was a clear difference. I changed it to update it. Most people don't take that for granted, right? So that's gonna be in the hanging chat of 2020, the, the matching of the signature. And I don't think it's gonna be some nefarious intent by what you just said, our signatures are different and people unbeknownst to them, not paying attention to that. And, and that's if you do sign it in the first place. So the, so the hanging chat will be not signing the form, the outside form, not I think what, in the secrecy envelope that might be required in certain states, right. or the signatures not matching. All of that, the day after the election, the canvassing board meets, a lot too many are thrown out because of that. So I, that's why I personally, you know, I have underlying conditions, but I'm like, I'm going in because I can't leave things up to chance, right? And and so smart, that I smart. Know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote on tomorrow. Tuesday. I'm going to vote right. in person on Tuesday to make. Well, sure I that voted the vote. first day of early voting in case something went wrong. I had all those days to get it right before the day of election. And so it, and now these all these alleged threats of physical violence on the day of election, people are voting astronomically quantity than they normally would because of all these concerns. Yeah. And of course the pandemic uh, hurts and, that. And, and then you got, you got drive-in voting. I thought in Florida, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Right. right so right. You roll up like the drive-in theater and, and or, or order a burger and, and drop your ballot in. Right. Right, so right. A lot of people are avoiding the mail issue that way, but other places that they're actually using mail, the military has always used it there are going to be problems with the U.S. mail, and it's up to state and federal courts to decide whether they're counted or not. You know, my, my opinion is, and this is, again, just my opinion, but, uh, I, you know, I think the, the states and government, not, maybe not all 50 states, I can speak for Florida because we live here, I think, I think on, a, on a basic level, they've bent over backwards to make sure people have the ability to vote, and the window has expanded every election for this right. early voting. Um, right. And in some states, you can, you know, you've heard this term, cure the ballot. You can vote on the fourth right, and fifth right. and correct things. And I, I even read that most states, Florida included, they will inform you if your signature doesn't match. Exactly. You can to correct it. So everyone has the ability to vote. What would you say is your biggest fear heading into, you know, things are so polarized because of, you know, we've got um, social unrest, we've got a pandemic, we've got a let's just say a, uh, somebody who's in the Oval Office who people are very either passionate about or, or vehemently against, which is not always the case. Uh, right. what, what's your biggest fear? My, you know, my biggest fear is, is, is the unknown ways of gumming up the works of an election where people who are partisan, you know, we, we all would like to believe that we're objective, but that's almost impossible. We all have an opinion as to who should be elected, but- Absolutely. And, we have where they are informed before the fact and they can cure their problem. In other states, they just rule they don't necessarily have to inform. They can inform them after the fact. So what good is it to find out 10 days after the election? Well, guess what? We did not count your ballot for this reason. And so that's going on. And, and, and as long as it goes on in swing states that matter, that's what the targets will be. So Florida, we've been sued enough and we've been embarrassed enough that we've... <laughs> Embarrassed, you know, yeah. Casting yeah. the wide net right. to draw votes and all of that extra good stuff. 
I think Florida is, is, is as purple as it's ever been, and it's going to be what it is. I don't really do you think Florida. Uh, do you think Florida is a purple state still? It, it is a purple state. It's leaning red, but it it, it could like during the Obama years, it, it Obama won the state of Florida. So yeah, it, I don't think did he win it twice. Population it. wise, it's purple. Yeah, it's red in terms of the districts, the, the way right. it's gerrymandered, right? So it's clearly red by gerrymandered districts, but total population for the state, it's a purple state. It could go either way. There are more Democrats registered than there are Republicans. But all all Florida Democrats don't always vote Democratic Party. So very and, true. So you can win. It depends on the turnout in the major cities that benefit Democrats. But all the other rural counties outside of the five or six major cities, they yeah. vote Republicans. So it depends on turnout in Florida. And Reggie Mitchell, thank you so much for your time. We will You're see you welcome. next week. I'm uh, looking forward week. to uh, a very exciting uh, next few days. <laughs>